Hello, welcome to the Fairly Bad Podcast, a podcast which is definitely bad. I'm Pencil. I'm Paper. And today's Fairly Bad RPG idea is... The monster hunters are called to a town where someone's been reporting a lot of ghost sightings. When they get there, it turns out the whole town is ghosts. And they're complaining nope. about the one living person. So I, I do think this would be a genuinely interesting idea. Just because humans are scary, you guys. Like, you can just keep hacking bits off and poisoning us and giving us diseases and we just keep going. But yeah, I mean, like, I guess it does make some sense for, like, ghosts to be like, hey, you should be dead now. You should be dead now. Come join our little housing um, administration. <laughs> like a little ghost commune. Yeah. Little ghost commune with this one guy who's like lost half their brain and some of their lungs and is still refusing to like become a ghost friend. I like the idea that then the entire job of the monster hunters isn't to kill this guy, it's just to make him like do a Padme and just die of sadness. Your mission, if you choose to accept it, is to make this one person really unreasonably sad so they can join the um, PTA. Like, dying of a broken heart is a thing. Yeah. But, like, I, I guess so is dying of being stabbed a lot. True, but that's less elegant. And, you know, in the, in the D&D world, if you kill them too violently, they might come back as a revenant or something. Whereas you just want another nice ghost. Yeah. I'd, l- I'd like the idea that, like, each um, type of undead just has their own little undead village. Like, they can't come back as a revenant because then they will have to move to the revenant's town down the road. Which is just a giant fight club, presumably. <laughs> no one wants to go to revenant's town. Like, I, I like the idea, which I know it has been explored before. But, like, I really like the idea of, like, ghosts see living people as ghosts and themselves as living people. Like, I know that, like, yeah, it's been done before as a concept, but I do like, I do really like the idea of, like, using that more, especially in horror games. Where, yeah, like, where you, maybe even if it's unclear which inhabitant of the house is a ghost and which inhabitant of the house is the living one. And part of the thing is trying to figure out which one is, like actually the person you're meant to exercise. Things I, I haven't come across this concept before and I'm I'm really struggling with it because humans are pre ghosts. Yeah. But like it was the film The Others was the last was the one I saw which had it as a concept. So I haven't seen that and uh. I'm just, I am genuinely really struggling with this concept because humans are like wandering around and then they become ghosts. So if ghosts think that they're alive, humans can't be the dead ones. They'd have to be like pre people. Mm. I think it's just like, yeah, it's a lot, there's a lot of ideas of like ghosts. Oh, mommy, where do babies come from? Well, when a man and another man hate each other very much. <laughs> No, it's like it's not that like they think that humans and ghosts are two separate species. They're aware that humans are alive. They're aware that humans are alive and ghosts are dead. They're just not. They just think that they're still alive. Like they perceive themselves as still living people and can't fully perceive the living. So from oh, their so it's perspective, just like a, a different stage. Yeah. So from their perspective, they're walking around wholly physical and wholly visible and looking like living people, and there are these vague shadowy figures moving around their house. When, in fact, what's happening is they're a ghost and the shadowy people are the people who live there now. Or at least we think they're the ghosts. Yeah. But yeah, like, I definitely think there's a thing of, like, especially if it was, like, the premise was, like, you're getting all the information over the internet or by letters or some other way where you can't directly talk to the person, where you have to figure out who's a ghost and who isn't. Like Werewolf, but with ghosts and fire Twitter. <laughs> Which I feel is the one thing that would improve Werewolf. I mean, I think Werewolf by Twitter is is just Twitter. <laughs> like, oh, like I heard from this person that this third person might have a bad friend. <laughs> Twitter is just a game of like 
ultimate werewolf, except instead of werewolves, it's Nazis. Yeah. But yes. Yeah. But going back to the actual prompt, as opposed to the terrible state of Twitter, um, yeah, like, the third idea is just that ghosts do have their own, like, Harry Potter ghosty world. It probably wouldn't be called the ghosty world, because that sounds awful. But that there are just, when you die, you just go to these little cities where the ghosts live. It's all very domestic. Just kind of kind of like the afterlife from Coco, where it's just, here's another yeah. town. Yeah. And like what has happened is some living person has showed up early and the ghosts are getting annoyed. Because it just, you know, I like the idea of there being like ambassadors between our world and like the ghost world and all of that kind of concept. I do like the idea of a death certificate as like a passport to the afterlife. You can't die unless you've written a death certificate. But then if... Is the reason that some ghosts stay in the regular world then is because, you know, their bodies haven't been found or for whatever reason they don't have a death certificate, it's not registered, yeah. so they, they can't get through immigration. <laughs> the Grim Reaper is just like, shows up like black cloak, scythe, glowing eyes, sits down, pulls out some forms and asks you to start filling them in. But yeah... I do love the idea of, yeah, you have to resolve this ghost unfinished business, which involves getting food there. Yeah, so yeah, the Grim Reaper is just like, you know, shows up. Scythe, HUD, glowing eyes, all of it, sits down, pulls out a stack of paperwork, puts on its reading glasses and starts, like, asking and starts filling in the form. And just, yeah, you you have to, like, exercise this ghost by properly completing their paperwork. It's basically just a bureaucracy em up. So if the afterlife has immigration, yeah. do they also have like customs? <laughs> like if you're buried with with grave goods, like, yeah, that's great, but some of these things you can't bring with you. <laughs> I'm sorry, you can't bring more than like ten fluid ounces into the afterlife. I know you were buried with flowers, but some of these are not indigenous to ghost worlds. <laughs> I, I want to know what flowers are indigenous to Ghost World. Because it doesn't sound like a place with a lot of flowers. Lilies? I guess. The, and those weird ones with like the translucent leaves. Mm. I want to see a ghost whose unfinished business is they're just so fucking sick of lilies. <laughs> like they've just come back to the... Like, I saw the idea of resurrection being you just emigrate from Ghost World. Yeah. And yeah. zombies have dual citizenship. <laughs> like, the thing is, this does make a lot of, like, the way the undead work in D&D make a lot more sense, but also it's just... I don't quite know how I like to reveal that, like, all of this is due to misfiled paperwork. We've uncovered <laughs> the biggest conspiracy... <laughs> All of the undead just exist because the Raven Queen can't be bothered filling out her forms correctly. They're called the Forgotten Realms because they keep losing paperwork down the back of the sofa. <laughs> yep, we have solved d and Also, can, can we just go back to... Because there was one part of the idea that I didn't read... Yeah. Which was that the one living person is walking around bragging about their working organs, and that's what's bugging the ghosts. Power move. There is a power move, but at the same time, like, surely the ghosts could just respond, like, I don't need organs, bitch. <laughs> I mean, like, you know, they don't need them, but, like, it's like a kind of. I guess it's like, you know, someone's walking around, like, yeah, look at my gold-plated watch. You don't need a gold-plated watch, but, like, you know, it's a bit rude of them to point out the fact you don't have one. So lungs are, like, a fancy accessory in Ghost World? Yeah, in Ghost World, lung, uh, organs are luxury items. Which at least... Oh, is that why zombies, like, eat brains so they can then sell them on the brain black market in Ghost World? Well, they are awfully valuable. 
I see what you did there, and no. <laughs> <laughs> you are going to Ghost World. But yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's just, like, all of this makes a lot... Like, if you also have the organ black market, that does explain why the undead are usually described as, like, disemboweling their victims or what have you. Because they want those organs. Yeah. All this, all necromancers are just like pawns for the organ black markets of Dead World. So clearly the most efficient way to perform an exorcism isn't doing the paperwork. It's just leaving haggis around the house. <laughs> you just walk up to the ghost that's like shrieking and throwing things and it's like, hey... And then you just open your jacket. It's just got lungs and hearts and stuff you got from local butchers. Maybe some of these will persuade you to leave this house alone. If you're feeling really fancy, maybe a bone or two. <laughs> bone to ghosts is the only way to end the vanish, the end, end the haunting. I, th I think that's the point where we move on to questions. <laughs> Okay, our first question. <laughs> I'm sorry. Our first question is so hilarious. What paper is... Okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. Okay. Bone the ghost. So, our first question is from a Tumblr, Anon. Uh, this is a place to ask. Do you think Grumpy or Dopey would be a better barbarian? I've been classing the seven dwarves. On examination, you could also make Dopey a bumbling barbarian ranger or something. I feel Grumpy is the obvious barbarian, but he's not a very good one. Like, instead of going into a rage, he just gets grumpy, so when you're attacked by, like, orcs, he just throws a strop, sits in the corner, and refuses to fight. I mean... Dopey does try to trick Snow White into giving him extra kisses, so clearly he's a slutty little bard. I safely say that's not a sentence I ever expected someone to say about Dopey from Snow White, but... But also, can you deny it? I guess. Yeah, like, so... I'm kind of interested to know what the other ones would be. Like, Doc is a doc. Doc is an, um, wizard. Yeah, because he's the Doc's smart one. A, yeah. Things, I don't really remember their personalities beyond the parts that their names imply. The other ones are all kind of the same. Yeah, I feel they're all... I feel Sleepy is maybe like a rogue because you sleep and then you don't see him because he's asleep. <laughs> oh, Bashful is a rogue because like, he's hiding because he doesn't want to talk to people. I think Bashful is a is a bard because there's I don't know why I remember so much of Snow White, but there's a point where like he finally joins in the music and then he has a really pretty singing voice. So Aww. I think I think Bashful's a bard. Sneezy is a sorcerer, like a wild magic sorcerer and only casts spells when he sneezes. Just yeah, every time he sneezes he casts a random spell from his list. I think I think maybe Happy is a druid because, like, mm. guy's on something. <laughs> Happy is just high. I like that's your criteria for druid. Do they, they know a lot, of, a lot about plants? The entire class of druid is just a cover up for drug um, cartels. I guess he could also be a ranger. They also know plants. Yeah. There's a lot of weird crime gangs in this podcast. Right, next question. Yeah, I think I think we have we've established we've established classes based on very vague memories of the Snow White film. I, I would I would have rewatched it before recording to get mm. a better idea of their personalities. Maybe like but I've I never want to. I've never actually watched Snow White. Like everything I know about it, I know from seeing other people who have seen Snow White. Well, you know, see from other 
when I look at someone I can mentally see every movie they've ever seen. You know, uh, known from like, you know, pop cultural osmosis. Yeah. The second question is also related to something you mostly know about through osmosis. Tumblr user New Thoughts and Notebooks says, What's your opinion on a Doctor Who style Dungeons and Dragons campaign? You can play as a group of established aliens, Santarans or Zygons, or you can play as the companions of the Doctor, the DM, and go on adventures. Okay, so I have seen, I believe, a grand total of like six episodes of Doctor Who dispersed at random through the Doctors. So... So I think we should play a game of how much Doctor Who does Pencil remember? <laughs> okay, so... Do I know what a... Sun- Santarans are like the little angry potato men, right? Correct. Uh, Z- I want to say Zygons are... Are they shapeshifters? Yeah. Right, okay, see, so yeah, I've dropped two down. Yes. So, the Doctor in... I don't know who the Doctor is. I think the Doctor... The Doctor's... Yes, I... Yes. So, I don't think the Doctor should be the Doctor the DM. Because that would... It just seems like the ultimate GM NPC. Yeah, because the Doctor's whole thing is... I know what's going on, I know mm. how to solve it. It's just that some things might get in the way... But yeah, then again, I guess you also have the problem of, like, you don't want another player to be the Doctor for the same reason. So I vote... It would have to be kind of a Love and Monsters thing where the Doctor's just kind of background. That's the one where someone fucks a paving slab, right? Yeah. Okay, or right. or at least, like, Blink, where the Doctor's just like, here's a video. Or you just killed a Doctor. Started a campaign, the Doctor's killed by a space lizard or whatever the fuck is attacking people in Doctor Who. Um, And now you have to pilot the TARDIS. See, the problem with that is if you take out the Doctor, is it then a Doctor Who campaign or is it just a sci-fi campaign that blatantly rips off Doctor Who? You know, you still have, like, the Doctor's body. Like, the Doctor can regenerate, so every, like, few weeks, they come back. And then, like, they're, like, then they, like, stay here long enough to go, yes, this is a verified Doctor Who campaign, and then something kills them again. And that just happens regularly enough that it's a real Doctor Who campaign. What if you just all play different incarnations of the Doctor? That could work. I guess you could also just do a sci-fi campaign that rips off Doctor Who. Because there's sort of terrible specials like the Five Doctors and the Three Doctors. You could just all play different incarnations of the Doctor. You could. Which would... I think you'd have enough kind of group disagreements on style that it would be kind of like a Companions one, Hmm. but with more... Background knowledge, I guess. Yeah. Which the players would have more background knowledge than most. Yeah, I think you should. Do- do. Yeah, because I think one of the issues with Doctor Who is if you're, if you have someone who pl- wants to play a Doctor Who campaign, they're going to know a decent amount about Doctor Who. Yeah, like you can't have the thing that happens every couple of years where it's like, what's a Cyberman? Because like we all know what a Cyberman is. Unless, actually, unless. So you do Doctor Who, and the kind of you know you're picked up by the Doctor and go on an adventure, but you can but you make up the entire rest of the universe like you don't have any of the Daleks or Cybermen or what have you. It's just entirely your own creations, and that way everyone is just as confused and unsure what's going on as the companions are. But again, at that point, is it a Doctor Who campaign? Well, it's just the Doctor's in it. Like any campaign with the Doctor in it is a Doctor Who campaign. Have them like show but up. Then you've got the problem of the Doctor as an NPC again. Yeah, I, I feel like we're establishing that the best way to do a Doctor Who style Dungeons and Dragons campaign is either everyone's the Doctor, 
Or you're not doing a Doctor Who style one. <laughs> the best way to do it. Um, yeah, best way to do a Doctor. I mean, like you know, it's a Doctor Who style one. Like it's Doctor Who, like non-name brand. Store bought. It's Sci-Fi Monster of the Week. Yeah. But yeah, like maybe like if you just have the Doctor, but like I don't know, they're they're tired and they're just staying on the TARDIS and sending you off to do adventures for them. Or like maybe film Doctor Who. Where it's just like, I, I guess I'm someone? That reference means nothing to me, but I will assume it was he, hilarious. He has amnesia. Ah, okay. Um, actually, that could be fun. You all could be the Doctor. <laughs> we're going <laughs> back to weird... Fa- the we're going back to weird variants on Werewolf. Twelve night, uh, one night ultimate uh, Doctor Who. Except even you don't know if you're the hmm. Doctor. And the twist is because of time travel, they're all the Doctor. And then we just have all of the ideas combined. Yeah. I think Lost and Heroes all RPGs ultimately boil down to One Night Ultimate Werewolf. And it's hard to play a campaign where one of the characters knows significantly more about everything. Yeah. I don't know where the fuck I got Twelve Night Ultimate Werewolf from. Some kind of weird Christmas version. <laughs> I would play that. Like it's like Werewolf, except instead of people, you have like a pile of presents, and some of them contain werewolves, and you have to decide which one to open. It's just regular wolves in Lapland. <laughs> but yeah, can we talk about Christmas Werewolf for a moment? Because I want to play this. To be fair, we only have two questions. So, third question from Mod Pencil. Hey, how would I make Christmas Werewolf? Okay, so... For the first question is, are there wolves that far north? There must be, right? Um, I mean, I, I don't know. Like, because, yeah, like, the North Pole has huskies, so presumably it at least would have had wolves. Unless the huskies were brought there by people. That is possible. People do like bringing things to places. But Finland has wolves. Hmm. Which I I am ruling as close enough. Yeah. Uh, okay, according to um, Wikipedia, which is the ultimate source for all knowledge, wolves live in Arctic tundra. So yes, there are wolves in the Arctic. Not like okay. the full ice cappy bit, but the tundra bits. So Lapland werewolves. Yeah. You're all elves, and you have to hide the werewolf problem from Santa because it's the 22nd of December, and nothing can go wrong right now. I like this variant of werewolf where rather than trying to figure out who the werewolves are, what you're trying to do is hide the mutilated bodies of the werewolves. Oh no, you still have to find out who the werewolves are. But you also have to stop Santa finding out. Like, in like the light of it, you can expand it to like with the other classes, but it's things like um, the Krampus and the Grinch and what have you, or who are there for other reasons. Yes, everyone's just different Christmas characters. Yeah, like the Grinch. Not so tr- The Grinch is trying to make sure that like Santa figures out about the werewolves, so Christmas is cancelled. But also, he has to protect Max from the werewolves. Yeah, Max is Max is a uh, yeah because Max, Max is, is the most important character in the Grinch. Hmm. And yeah, you have I th- like I mean, like you have the problem of like how does no one notice this is the Krampus? But one of the secret roles in One Night Ultimate Werewolf is the child. So like, and people are just really stupid. Um, he just wear, wears a hood. It's, it's cold. He's bundled up. Like one of them. One of them is like the Easter Bunny, who has to like convince everyone that the best way to deal with this is start making chocolate eggs instead. Oh, the Easter Bunny would be like extra under threat though, because wolves do eat rabbits. <laughs> yeah. the Easter Bunny's job in this game is just to hide. Yeah, the Easter. I mean, like, yeah, the Easter Bunny's goal is to make sure that, like, everyone except... Like, if everyone except them is eaten by werewolves, if they're the last non-werewolf, they win. Mm. But yeah, I feel this Christmas one would work. Like, okay... I don't really like werewolf because I don't like lying games. 
mm. which I think normal people call hidden role games. Yes, they do. Um, but I think I would enjoy watching a game of this. Yeah, like, I think possibly the way I would do it is you have the werewolf thing going on, and you also have to, like, like, possibly the way... Okay, possibly it would be, like, you have... You can vote to to select a werewolf, or you can vote to make a presence. And it's kind of like... If you don't have enough presence, Santa is mad at you. But also, if you're eaten by werewolves, you're eaten by werewolves. Oh, I like that. So, like, the way that you hide it from Santa is you just pretend everything's fine and you're still working. Yeah. I really like that. <laughs> But yeah, twelve, uh, twelve night ultimate werewolf. Also, people keep sending like this partridges. was an important thing to explore. Also, people keep sending partridges and French hens and lords are leaping to the workshop, and it's really annoying. That's about it for today. If you have a question, you can send it to us at um, probably bad RPG ideas Tumblr or email probably bad podcast at gmail dot com. Um, you can also find us on Facebook as the Probably Bad Podcast, and Twitter as Bad Probably. Thank you to Nick Blake for editing. If you want to support us, you can head to patreon.com slash probablybadrpgideas for Patreon bonuses such as bonus episodes and homebrew content. Or you can go to ko-fi.com slash probablybadrpgideas if you want to just do a one-time donation to help us with hosting. Um, you can also support us if you don't have money or just don't want to give us money for some reason um by leaving a review or rating wherever you're listening to this and And remember to have have a probably probably bad bad day. day